Listen, you could be sitting on a gold mine and you don't even realize it. The last thing I want to happen to you is for you to spend one of these coins when in reality they're worth a lot more money than you think. Let's take this coin for example that sold for $138,000. Just imagine going through your pocket change, spending this coin, later to find out it sold for this much money. Now we're going to eliminate that. So this is a 19 at 99 one cent Lincoln coin here. Now this one was graded by PCGS, a mint state. 66. The highest grade we can get in grading is 70 and the two best grading companies to go for are either PCGS or NGC. Now this is what you need to know. So these grading companies, it's really important to get a coin like this graded because for a collector, someone that's buying this coin, they want to know that the coin is indeed real and genuine. The first thing you may notice about this 1999 one cent coin is the edges and the around the rim there look pretty faded and worn down. That's the area you want to look for because this coin right here was accidentally muled with a Roosevelt dime reverse. So to keep this very brief, you need to make sure that there aren't people out there cutting coins in half and gluing them together. Someone could do that, just recolor the back of the Roosevelt dime and stick these two together and try to sell it for this much money. That's why grading is so incredibly important. I also advise against altering a coin like that because it is against the law to deface any US federal currency. While this is not any sort of advice, I highly recommend against doing anything like that. Plus, not that I'm the biggest believer in karma, I think that doing that is just bad karma. So long story short, if you have a coin that looks like this, you could have a coin with a lot of money because this one sold for $138,000. This one little Washington quarter sold for $34,800 and here's why. First thing you're going to see on this coin is the coloring that's happening around the edges there. That is actually a natural occurring process called oxidation. So the air will oxidize with the metals in the coin, causing them to change colors. This one was graded by PCGS at a mint state 66. Now this 1932 quarter, it's important to know that this was the first year they ever issued these coins. So even if your coin is not in this high of a grade, it's still going to be worth good money because this one sold for $34,800. Wait, 90% of you that watch the videos are still not subscribed. So you better subscribe right now so we can keep the lights on. Wait, wait, no, I was kidding. I was kidding. These Ohio State headquarters are great and this one sold for $3,525 and here's why. Remember I said the highest achievable grade in grading is 70? Well, this one graded at the Mint State 69 grade by NGC. This is a 2002 D 25 cent Ohio State headquarter. If your coin is able to achieve this high of a grade, you could have a coin worth a lot of money. Now remember, getting this high of a grade is super challenging. So it is quite a risk if you're trying to achieve this high of a grade because it is very hard to achieve. This Roosevelt Dime sold for $35,250 just because of this one little thing I'm going to show you right now. So this 1968 10 cent Roosevelt dime was graded by PCGS a proof 68. Now the first thing you want to see is if your coins backdrop or the field of the coin looks like a mirror. That's the most important thing on this coin. If it's a proof coin, it's going to have that mirror backdrop. Now these proof coins should all have an S mint mark standing for the San Francisco mint. A lot of proof coins were minted at San Francisco. Long story short, considered to be a mint error. It should have had an S mint mark, but it does not. Now I get a lot of questions here, so pay attention. If you have a 1968 Roosevelt dime and it's missing an S mint mark, it has to be a proof. If it's not, it's not worth that much money. Be careful because there are some people out there that will try to polish a coin like this to make it appear to be a San Francisco minted proof, when in reality, it's just a Philadelphia minted coin. And to clarify, if your coin does not have a mint mark, chances are it's a Philadelphia via minted coin, but you need the San Francisco like this one because it sold for $35,250. I'm going to keep this brief, but this coin sold for $20,520 and here's why. This is a 2000 P 5 cent Jefferson nickel graded by PCGS a mint state 65. Now when you first see the coin, you may think it's incredibly damaged, but it's not. This is a mint factory error. That's only part of the reason why it sold for so much money. One, because it graded very highly and two, because this coin was accidentally struck with two obverse dies. Obverse meaning the front of the coin. So if you have a coin like this, it could be worth a lot of money because this one has two fronts on it and it sold for $20,520. This coin sold for $336,000 and here's why. This is a 1943 cent coin struck on a bronze planchet graded by PC Justin AU50. AU means almost uncirculated, so this grade is not even that high. But that's not even why it sold for so much money. It's because this is an incredibly rare coin. So these coins should have been struck on a zinc coated steel planchet, but during the war effort, 
they needed bronze for ammunition, so they transitioned into that zinc-coated steel planchet. So all 1943 coins should be struck on a zinc planchet. They should not look like this. If your coin does look like this, it's either A, fake, or B, you've hit that gold mine and you need to consult with an expert. I recommend getting the opinion of at least three different people before selling your coin because that way you know you're getting the true value of your coin. YouTube is an incredibly smart machine and they know exactly what video you should watch next and that video is on the screen so go ahead and click on that video and I'll see you inside.